Hey everyone, Data here, and welcome back to another NHL 22 career simulation. Today, taking on the career of the 8th overall selection in the 2022 draft by the Detroit Red Wings, Marco Casper. Marco Casper, an extremely talented two-way centerman out of Austria, joining Marco Rossi as one of the highest drafted Austrians in the country's history. Marco Casper, a very popular suggestion in the comments sections of previous career simulations. So once again, goes to show that the more a player gets suggested, the more likely that a simulation will happen for them. So keep voting down there. Casper was a player that most scouts and analysts saw going in the late teens or so, according to the research that I did. But Stevie Y, as always, taking the guy that he wanted at number eight, and I'm sure that it'll come back to reap many benefits in the future. Marco Casper played in the SHL last season, a men's league, and in that league scored seven goals and four assists for 11 points through those 46 games, the highest scoring under 18 player in the league. He even added six points in 13 games in the playoffs. So he had a very very impressive showing in a very high caliber league. And because of that great performance in the SHL, he was drafted as high as he was. Plus he has given the high top six potential heading into this simulation. The game has him as medium top six, 68 overall. I thought the overall was okay, but I boosted his potential to high top six. He is a very strong skater. He could almost be listed as a power forward actually, despite being only six foot one, you know, you think of power forwards being six foot four plus, but he does play as a strong puck protector. He is a very strong skater. As I said, that's why he has the 84 acceleration and speed. You might think that 75 strength is a bit low, but keep in mind that right now he is 17 years of age as the game begins in September of 2021. Two and a half star shooting, one and a half star, most things, two stars. He will grow over time, but as it will likely transpire in the real world, Marco Casper likely won't make his NHL debut until two or three seasons from now at the very earliest. So even though we'll have Detroit drafting Casper in the 2022 draft, the Red Wings will likely look very different in 2025, 26, whenever Casper makes the league. So as always with these simulations, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. It's not a Detroit Red Wings simulation. It is a Marco Casper career simulation on the wings. And we will see, does he stay with Detroit? Does he become a top six centerman? I've seen many people thinking that he could be a middle six centerman and his ceiling would be second line. Could he even push past that and be first line? How much money will he make? What kind of contracts will he sign? Will he move on to bigger and maybe better things or will he commit to staying in Detroit? That will be for us to find out. So as always, we take control of a team that is completely separate from Detroit. Everything is set to auto, the trades, the staff management, the injuries, everything's set to auto. We are just watching. We have zero control over anything that happens. We're just gonna watch the next 20 whatever years unfold and see what comes for Casper's career. As well, I love making these videos, but I always throw it out there. These simulations take a very long time, unfortunately, on the slow NHL 22 simulation engine. It takes a good two full days just to record the career. So if you enjoy it, leave a like and leave a comment with what your thoughts are about the simulation and do consider subscribing as we do NHL 22 franchise mode a boatload of other NHL 22 career simulations you can check out a playlist of breaking news and analysis in the real world of hockey and much much more so if you enjoy this video take a minute and check out the rest of the channel but all that being said let's get into the 2022 draft and get Casper to the Red Wings so in the 2022 draft the Detroit Red Wings go ahead and select Marco Casper with the eighth overall pick how do you like that great coincidence high top six 68 overall two way forward everything's still the same in terms of his attributes i believe he may have yeah he grew from six foot one to six foot two so that often happens in franchise mode where the player will grow one or two inches max between the ages of 18 and 20 or whatever so over the next couple of years he will likely be spending a lot of time in the shl we will just gloss over those years give a quick note to what those stats were and then get to year number one whenever that is whenever he cracks one of the north american leagues whether it be the red wings or or their AHL affiliate. So after spending 2022-23 back in Europe, Marco Casper has made the jump to North America for his first season in 2023-24. He's now six foot three, 198 pounds. So he's gained what, like 11 pounds and two inches in the last two years. 
He's now 73 overall. His puck skills at two and a half stars, senses at two, shooting at two and a half, defense at two and a half, all that. But his skating at three and a half stars with 88 acceleration and speed, and his physical up to three and a half stars with 86 aggressiveness, body checking, 87 durability, and 84 strength. So great to see Marco Casper making his North American debut. I don't think technically he'd be allowed to in the real world because I think the AHL, you have to be 20 or over, 19 wouldn't work. But because he's a European pro, prospect here in EA land he can get signed none of that really matters too much all we got to say is here he is on the third line of the Grand Rapids Griffins not foreseeing a crazy offensive season from Casper but great to be able to finally track his progress and we'll see what he does with the Red Wings AHL affiliation in this first season of the sim in year number one, the Grand Rapids Griffins finished 24th in the NHL with a losing record of 35, 39, and 8. The AHL system always cracks me up as the Yuka Comets who went 31, 45, and 6 to finish like 6th from the bottom still make the postseason. In his first season in North America, Marco Casper posted 18 goals and 13 assists for 31 points through all 82 games. He was a negative 22 but did get some good power play time as he added 11 power play points. Five of his 18 goals were game winners, and he was averaging over 18 minutes of ice time per night. After his first season in North America, Casper grows to a 76 overall. Still probably a bit of a ways away from cracking the NHL lineup, but great to see him now at 89 acceleration and speed. Three-star defense, 82 offensive awareness, and much more to come. So let's see what he can do in his second year, hopefully with a promotion to the top six in the AHL. Year number two, and Marco Casper is now the second line center with the Grand Rapids Griffins, up to a 78 overall, enlisted as a minor checking forward. Very good to see this growth, 90 acceleration, 90 speed, everything coming along very nicely. Hopefully, a strong enough season will mean that he can crack the NHL lineup come 2025-26, but time will tell. He has Dennis Yan on his left and Timo Kultanen on his right, who was a eighth overall pick in 2023, a sniper. So hopefully, that will contribute to his scoring but after Casper had you know a 31 point in 82 games let's hope for more from him in a top six role here in the AHL in year number two with Casper as their second line centerman the Griffins finished 10th in the AHL a great record of 48 29 and 5 carrying them to the postseason Marco Casper played in all 82 games and although he had less goals than last season he had like triple the amount of assists 14 goals, 43 assists for a 57 point season from the second line centerman, a plus five, 91 penalty minutes, nine power play points, three shorthanded points, all while averaging 19 and a half minutes of ice time per night. In the postseason, the Griffins lost in four games in round number one to Texas, who went on to lose to Palm Springs, who lost to Stockton, who lost to Rochester. So the Griffins were the ultimate losers of the 2025 postseason. Despite the early exit, Marco Casper scored three goals and five points through the four games and after his second year in North America maintains his 78 overall status but his role is now fourth line forward so with the four star skating three star puck skills age of 21 right now he was drafted back in 2022 if he has a strong 2025 off season I could see there being enough growth headed into the 2025-26 season to have him crack the NHL lineup and with Detroit having missed the postseason last couple of years as well they could use all the help they could get and speaking of help the Red Wings won the draft lottery in 2020 2025, boosting them from the fourth to the first overall selection. And with that first overall pick in 2025, they go ahead and select a franchise winger, Vikingstad. How about that for a name? Kale Vikingstad. Is he Swedish? He has to be. Great X factors, crazy attributes, 83 overall at the age of 18. Hopefully with all the other prospects in Detroit, Edvinson, Sider, Kosa, now Casper, Raymond, even Joe Valeno. Hopefully Vikingstad can be added to that great group. And the Red Wings can begin to move into dynastic territory sooner rather than later as we begin 2025-26. All right, year number three, and Marco Casper is ready to make his NHL debut with the Detroit Red Wings here in 2025-26. Fairly realistic timeline, I would think. Here's your first look at the 2025 Wings. Zadina, Raymond, Edvinson, Sider, Hronik, uh, Kosa, Nedeljkovic, all players who are still here with the Detroit Red Wings. Unfortunately, over the last three years, I guess there was some money trouble. I don't know what happened, that Dylan Larkin's no longer here. So obviously, like we said at the beginning, 
beginning of the video, it's not a Red Wing simulation. Not everything can be 100% realistic when we're letting the computer make all the decisions. But we are following Marco Casper's career, and he is the second line center here on the wings. On his left, Jonathan Berggren, who is an 82 overall playmaker with four and a half star shooting, and Cole Lind on his right, a two way forward. Also in the forward core, you have Joe Valeno, Maxime Comtois, Adrian Kempe, Jesper Bokvist, Christian Dvorak at an 86 overall. Nor not a horrible team here on the wings. Marco Casper joins a strong team that will hopefully get stronger, especially with Vikingstad there as first line centerman. Casper up to an 82 overall now into 2025-26, listed as a third line checking forward. He has his four star skating and physical, which is very impressive. His shooting and senses still lagging behind a bit at three stars, but 86 offensive awareness. Add in some special teams time in a decent top six, not the greatest line mates, but a decent forward core as a whole. And I'm very curious to see how Marco Casper's rookie season will go here in 2025-26. Marco Casper's rookie season was not a great one as the Detroit Red Wings finished third last with a 30th place finish in the league, just one point shy of the bottom. 31, 42, and 9 was the record. Now, this is unfortunate, but it does add to the realism as it seems that Marco Casper had a major injury in his rookie season as he only played in 31 games. Four goals and six assists for 10 points through those games would have put him on a pace for 26 or 27 points. He was a negative 18 in those 31 games and was averaging almost 18 minutes of ice time per night. So it was looking to be a solid rookie season. It's realistic, but it's unfortunate that it has to happen here in his rookie season. It doesn't happen too often in our career simulations. So you know what? It does add to the entire story. He is an 82 overall after this rookie season and hopefully will come back fully healthy with more growth for 2026-27. Still a very strong player with great skating, 86 offensive awareness, so I'll be curious to see how he grows headed into his sophomore season and hopefully his first full season. In the 2026 draft, the Red Wings once again had a top three pick and with the third overall selection in the draft, they went ahead and selected a mediumly defensive defenseman, 77 overall, with some good X factors and high scoring in whatever league he was playing in six foot five big boy hopefully he will just add to the continued stockpile of prospects that the wings have and they can turn it around sooner rather than later now here's an interesting lineup for 2026-27 marco casper's sophomore season he is the first line center in detroit with lucas raymond on his left and viking a 90 overall on his right casper in 85 is still listed as a third line checking forward and likely wouldn't be a first line center this quickly in the nhl but with dylan larkin having left the team that leaves a major hole for him to fill and say what you will about that being realistic and i agree with you but as of the time of this recording dylan larkin will be a ufa headed into the 2023 off season so this is just one of those branched realities, I suppose. Marco Casper into his second season has four and a half skating and physical. Great 90 plus attributes right there. 89 offensive awareness and four star defense really growing in his two way abilities. It, with Vikingstad on his right and Raymond on his left, this could be an explosive season. He weighs 199 pounds now becoming a big boy at six foot three. The team itself has a decent forward core. Edmondson and Sider out there. Jonas Brodeen, still Kosen and Dalkovich between the pipes hopefully the wings with a healthy season can make it a playoff season in year number four marco casper's sophomore season the detroit red wings return to the postseason for the first time in 11 years finishing 13th in the league with a record of 43 32 and 7 after their 25 years of consecutive playoff berths ended in 2016 making it back in 2027 was a great relief Despite making the postseason, it wasn't a huge offensive year from anyone in particular. Marco Casper played in all 82 games, which was great to see, but he only scored 20 goals and 19 assists for 39 points. I doubt he stayed first-line centerman all year long, as Zadina and Vikingstad were in the 50s for their points. The Red Wings even acquired Crosby at one point. A plus 18 on the year for Casper. No power play points, which is unfortunate, meaning that he played 18.08 of ice time per night, when it probably could have been in the 20s. In the postseason, the Red Wings dropped in five Five games in round number one to the eventual Stanley Cup winning Columbus Blue Jackets. So it's sad to go out in the first round, but you know, no shame in going out to the eventual cup winners. In those five games, Marco Casper scored one goal and three points and was a negative two and has now grown to an 86 overall after his sophomore season. Somehow he's still listed as a third line scoring forward, but he's up to an 86 overall. Gotta respect it. Four and a half star defense with the five star skating and the five star physical. Very, very
very impressive to see that. Casper has also done his entry level contract, so he'll need a new deal headed into 2027 28. Do he and the Wings go for a shorter term bridge or a long term lockup? We'll see what gets hammered out. Headed into his third season in the NHL, Marco Casper is still centering the top line here in Detroit. He has signed an extremely team friendly contract. Three years at $2.76 million per season. Even though he's an 86 listed as a third-line scoring forward, a guy playing first-line center, that is a steal, and he'll be paid a total of $8.28 million. His attributes don't seem to have changed too, too much. Still the five-star physical, skating, and four-and-a-half defense. Hopefully the rest will continue to develop this season, as he does have 93 overall Viking stat on his right and 88 overall Raymond on his left. Coast up to an 89 overall. So let's hope for another postseason push for the Red Wings, especially that the clock is now ticking both on them and Casper since after this three-year deal, he will be an unrestricted free agent. So both the team and the player will want to make these next three years count. In year number five, the Detroit Red Wings once again return to the postseason as they finish 11th in the NHL with a record of 45, 30, and 7. Marco Casper once again had a 39-point season matching what he did last year, this year in two less games, but 15 goals and 24 assists. Nothing too crazy, and he didn't play first-line center the entire season, I'll tell you that. As you can tell by the line scouted, he was playing on offensive line two for most of the season, I believe. Negative five, three power points play points again five game winning goals and averaging over 18 and a half minutes of ice time per night in the postseason the wings once again fell in round number one to the eventual stanley cup champions this time they pushed that team to seven games as they and tampa went the distance but the lightning took down the wings and then went all the way to a stanley cup title bad luck to get matched up with the stanley cup champion in back-to-back postseasons but marco casper did not do very well last year three points in five games this year seven games zero zero points no goals no assists, and a negative two he was playing good ice time he was playing over 18 minutes per night not a single point registered from the two-way forward who is still an 86 overall after the season and still this is a third line scoring forward four and a half star defense five star skating now at 93 acceleration and speed but it seems as though the low shooting and puck skills are keeping him from scoring i don't know the team itself seems to be on the uptrend but casper's kind of lagging behind so hopefully we'll have some good growth in the 2028 off season and we'll be ready for year number six Year number six, and Marco Casper now finds himself on the third line here in Detroit, but the forward core is quite stacked. Despite being a third liner, he has an 87 overall Timo Kultanen, a sniper with 99 shooting accuracies on his right, and this guy Eric York, an 80 overall two-way forward on his left. So it's still a strong line for Marco Casper, who is uh, still maintaining his 86 overall status. The puck skills and the shooting haven't really come along too much, but his defense is great. His skating and his physical are both elite. I just hope that heading into his fourth season and fingers crossed his third fully healthy one he'll be able to crack more than 40 points in year number six the Detroit Red Wings win their division for the first time since 2011 18 years later they have a fifth place finish in the NHL a very strong 51 24 and 7 record to make a third consecutive postseason Marco Casper had a very impressive season as he scored 20 goals matching his career high but 33 assists a new career high by far and 53 points 14 points ahead of his previous career high of 39 he played in all 82 games was a plus four 14, only 42 pony minutes this season, thankfully. Nine power play points, but only averaging under 15 and a half minutes per night. So crazy to see him hit career highs with that type of ice time. In the postseason, the Red Wings went on a run as they finally made it out of the first round. They took down the Canadians in five, then beat the Panthers in five. And in the Eastern Conference final, they dropped in six to the New Jersey Devils, who went on to lose in seven to the Nashville Predators. That was the furthest that the Red Wings had gone in the postseason since they lost in the cup final back in 2009 20 years ago in 16 games marco casper finally put up some points three goals eight assists and 11 points he was a plus six very very good to see and his postseason ice time was higher at 17 13 per night after that very good season marco casper is now 204 pounds he's a big boy and he's also an 88 overall now listed as a second line forward and his potential has grown from high top six to medium elite he now has four star shooting senses and puck skills to go along with his five star defense and physical but still very elite numbers from casper who will be going into 
into the final year of that very cheap contract extension that he signed. So that's great for him in terms of the money that he'll receive, but will the Red Wings be able to afford him? For now, let's just hope for more of the same and go on another deep run in 2029-30 and see if Marco Casper can get back into that top six because if he's doing that on the third line, I'd love to see him on the first or second line. Year number seven, and Marco Casper is still centering the third line in Detroit. Not exactly sure why, especially with an 80 overall on the first line. Hopefully that changes over the course of the year, and usually it does, but still a bit disappointing to see it start things off. Lawson Kraus, 85 overall on his right. Timo Malmivara, a sniper on his left. The core is still quite strong. That first line, the wingers are elite. Edvinson, Sider, Cracknell, all here on defense. Kosa, a 91 overall between the pipes. It should be another, hopefully, deep run for the wings. Casper, 88 overall, still as a second line forward. All of his attributes the same as we left off at the end of last season. Hopefully his skating can get back to five stars and his four star shooting and puck skills can maintain his offensive abilities. But it's the last year of that three year extension that he signed. So let's see what he can do with the wings here in 2029-30. In year number seven, Detroit had a bit of a scare as around the halfway point of the season, they were just under 500, but they clawed back and finished 17th place in the NHL with a record of 41, 34, and seven to make a fourth consecutive postseason. And how about this in a contract year, no less? Marco Casper has a crazy year. Career highs in goals, assists, points, plus minus, everything. 29 goals and 41 assists for 70 points in 82 games. Great numbers from him. We always knew he had it in him. Just took a little bit of time to get it going. Plus 37, 52 penalty minutes, 12 power play points, and averaging over 18 minutes of ice time per night. Even eight shorthanded points. He was great on the penalty kill. This isn't even playing like 22 plus minutes, 20 plus minutes. 18.07 per night, a 70 point season. In the postseason, the Wings made it through round number one as they took down the Flyers in seven but unfortunately lost in five to the Carolina Hurricanes, who would go on to lose in seven to the Bruins, who would go on to win the Stanley Cup. So a second round exit for Detroit in 2030. Casper played in all 12, and in those 12 games had four goals, three assists, and seven points. Not bad at all. He was a plus five, took no penalties, and was averaging almost 19 minutes of ice time per night. After that fantastic career season from Casper, he's still listed as a second line forward, but his potential has dropped from medium elite to medium top six, which is the lowest it's ever been because he was previously high top six but he goes into potentially unrestricted free agency with five star puck skills senses defense and physical four and a half skating four star shooting this is the best he has ever been these attributes are off the charts he was on probably the best contract in the nhl this past year at 2.76 million he's in line for a massive pay increase but the question will be can detroit afford him or will he move on in unrestricted free agency? After making constant improvements the last few years and having 211 points in 357 career games, I would hope he stays in Detroit, but it will likely just come down to the money. In year number eight, Marco Casper is sixth in the NHL. He goes to unrestricted free agency and signs with the St. Louis Blues. This one hurts because I really wanted to see him stay with Detroit. But you know what? It makes sense because the contract that he got signed to was wild. 12.27 million for the next six years. A total of 73.62 million for a six year deal that will bring him to the age of 32. Really crazy money that Detroit did not have because they had a lot of other players they had to sign. But Marco Casper is now the second line center in St. Louis. He's still an 89 overall with medium top six potential, listed as a second line forward with the five star everything that we saw at the end of last season. Still four star shooting and four and a half skating. Casper is an amazing two way forward who showed an ability to really score last season with the 70 points that he put up but before that his career high was 53 and you know mind you he hasn't played a ton of time in the NHL that is still a huge contract to reward him with and the Blues are really going to be banking on him continuing to do more of the same he has Sam Steele at an 83 on his left and Randy Dahlman 82 overall sniper with five star shooting on his right so the top six looks good here in St. Louis the defensive core is actually okay and goaltending is it's an 82 overall Mad Sogard backed up by 80 overall Capo Kakinen. Let's see what Casper can do and whether or not he continues the offensive abilities from last year. In year number eight, Casper is first with the Blues. St. Louis finishes second last in the NHL, a 31st place finish, the worst finish that Casper's ever been a part of. 
33, 42, and 7 was their record. Casper put up 11 goals and 44 assists for a 55-point season, playing in all 82 games, which was technically the second highest point-producing season of his career, but not quite a $12.27 million season in my opinion. He was a negative 15, had 44 penalty minutes, 8 power play points, 4 shorthanded goals, and was averaging just about 19 minutes of ice time per night. After that season, Marco Casper maintains his 89 overall status. His potential is now exact top 6 as he has turned 27 years of age. 98 discipline despite all the penalties. 93 offensive awareness. The shooting at 3.5 stars. Puck skills at 4. And hopefully St. Louis can find something to tweak the team a little bit. Maybe better goaltending, defense. But safe to say that things will be tight salary cap wise for many years to come. Okay, year number nine, and we're a bit more hopeful, as Marco Casper is still second line center on the Blues, but now he has Valerie Nachuskin on his left and Alex Tuck on his right. They're 34 and 35 years of age, respectively, but still 84 and 87 overall, respectively. Casper still at 89, listed as a second line forward. He maintains his five star senses, defense, skating, and physical over the offseason, so all that should help him to simulate very well. His shooting, though, at three and a half, and puck skills at four, so hopefully his line mates will help help to facilitate some success. A 55-point season wasn't bad, but for the $12.27 million that the Blues are paying him, they will need more, and hopefully he will carry them to a higher finish than second last. In year number nine, the St. Louis Blues go from second last to fourth last in the NHL. Technically, they were still tied with 74 points with the teams that finished second and third last. But a 29th place finish for the Blues with a record of 33, 41, and 8. Casper's offensive output was a little less than last season, 12 goals and 39 assists for a 51 point year, playing in all 82 games once again, negative 10 for the plus minus, 50 penalty minutes, 11 power play points, 4 shorthanded points, averaging just shy of 19 and a half minutes per night. After he had 4 consecutive postseason berths, Casper has now missed the postseason in consecutive years for the first time in his career. There's another 50 some point season for Casper and the Blues will really want him to start turning it up. He's still an 89 over. Overall, he has the potential to be so good, and he's getting paid so much money to be so good. He still has four seasons to go here in St. Louis, so let's just hope that next year isn't one that's spent in the basement of the league. I will also add that Casper had 143 takeaways this season, a new career high in that regard, so he's playing well defensively, but the offensive capabilities that he was thought to have had have kind of dried up the last couple of years. Moving into year number 10, Marco Casper is still centering the second line here in St. Louis. He has Dylan Jackson, the fourth overall pick in the 2031 draft on his left, and Rob Thomas on his right. Willie Nylander and Philip Forsberg, now the first line wingers with Zach Benson. Barrett Hayton's out here on the third line. Alex Tuck and Nachuskin went down in overall a little bit. Defense still leaves quite a bit to be desired, and goaltending is an 82 overall prospect. All right, at least there's that. Regardless, Marco Casper is an 89 overall, still listed as a second line forward with the five star senses, defense, skating, and physical. Coming off of back to back 50 some point seasons, he'll definitely want to earn his price tag. I'm sure there's a lot of people talking around St. Louis after the back to back basement finishes, but let's hope that this third year in St. Louis will be an improvement. Another slight improvement for the Blues in year number 10 as they finished 25th in the NHL, but once again sub-500 as their record was 35, 38, and 9. Marco Casper once again stayed around the 50-point range and played in all 82 games for the 5th consecutive year. 15 goals and 39 assists on the season with a negative 25, 84 penalty minutes. He was not happy this year. 7 power play points, 1 shorthanded point, averaging just 3 seconds shy of 19 minutes per night. That is now three consecutive postseason misses for Marco Casper and the Blues and with that season he now regresses to an 86 overall dropping three overall that's quite the dip the senses and defense at four puck skills and shooting at three and a half three more years at 12.27 for Casper the Blues just have to make the best of the situation that they've put themselves in try and build around him play him in that middle six role that he's been good at he can be that 50 point guy no problem but if you signed him to be 70 plus it might be a nasty few more years here as we head into year number 11. 
Year number 11, Marco Casper's fourth in St. Louis, and he is still centering the second line here on the Blues. He has Stanley Lyon, an 86 overall player who is the second overall pick in 2032. Four and a half star shooting two way forward on his left, and Bobby Brink, the 85 overall playmaker on his right. He himself is an 86 with Benson above him as first line centerman. He was really carrying the offense last year, so hopefully he can continue to do so with Thomas and Forsberg on his wings. Marco Casper, his attributes have pretty much stayed the same as the end of last season I believe. His puck skills all between 85 and 87. Three more years of 12.27. The team itself in St. Louis, they got Adam Boquist on the team, at least there's that, and goaltending 82 overall, 34 year old Michael DiPietro. The team has slowly improved every year the last three years, so hopefully this fourth year will continue that trend, but I'm not too sold on a postseason run. Surprise, surprise, in year number 11, the St. Louis Blues make the postseason, finishing 10th in the NHL in a very stacked Central Division, no less, just edging out the, the Coyotes by two points, who had one less win than the Blues, who went 46, 30, and 6. Marco Casper had his worst offensive season with the Blues so far and his worst in a good few years. Only 13 goals and 29 assists for the centerman, 42 in 82. He was a negative 2 as well, 44 penalty minutes, 5 power play points, 3 shorthanded points, and playing just over 18 minutes of ice time per night. And in the postseason, the St. Louis Blues went all the way to the Stanley Cup Final but then dropped to the Ottawa Senators. Wow. After finishing in the basement the last three years, the Blues beat the Sharks in round number one in six, the Golden Knights in five, the Avalanche in seven, and then in the Stanley Cup final, they lose in six games as the Sens win the 2034 Cup but crazy turnaround for St. Louis to have made it that far. Marco Casper did all right in the postseason as he scored six goals and five assists for 11 points through 24 games. Even plus minus 21 penalty minutes. He had a little bit of power play time, as always still getting his ice time likely through penalty killing, 18.43 on average per night. A decent season all around, even though it wasn't a very offensive season. And despite that great run, he does drop to an 85 overall, now at the age of 30. Listed as a third line scoring four, the game is doing him dirty here. He still has the four and a half star skating, but everything else continuing to drop. Defense, senses, and physical all at four. Puck skills and shooting both at three and a half. Two more years on that massive contract. The Blues just went on a great run all the way to Stanley Cup final. Can they try to run it back? Philip Forsberg is probably going to be expiring. Some other contracts going to be difficult to navigate with Casper's cap hit. But we'll see what St. Louis does in the offseason. Headed into year number 12. Year number 12 and Marco Casper is being disrespected down on the third line in St. Louis, usurped by Vyacheslav Kulamin, a 77 overall for top six minutes. Come on. Philip Heidel on his left and this guy Yves Durand on his right, a, another two-way forward, so not a great potential for scoring. Marco Casper now at the age of 30 is an 85 overall to start the season. His four and a half star skating is his best quality, but the rest is lagging behind. Coming off of his worst offensive season in St. Louis yet, but a Stanley Cup final appearance, I'll be curious to see what Casper and the Blues can do here in 2034-35. Forsberg is gone, Thomas is gone, Boakvist is gone, goaltending is still Michael DiPietro. Fingers crossed for year number 12. In year number 12, St. Louis was back to the basement of the NHL as they finished 25th in the league after making the cup final last year. 37, 39, and 6 was their record. Casper improved on last season but was still in the 40s as he had 9 goals and 38 assists. Those 9 goals was a career low when playing a full season. He was a negative 3, had 48 penalty minutes, 12 power play points, no shorthanded points, and only 16, 13 of ice time per night, so that's also one of his lowest in his career. He grows to an 86 overall after that lackluster season, now has 4.5 star skating and physical, but... I don't know. He needs better line mates. He needs a better team as a whole. The Blues just aren't doing it for him. And I understand that a lot of the salary cap is tied up in Casper. He signed on for one more year with the Blues at the very least. So let's hope for a fairy tale ending. But we'll see what the Blues do over this offseason. Headed into year number 13 to try and make that happen. 
Year number 13, Marco Casper's sixth in St. Louis and possibly his last. I really wonder what the fan atmosphere is about Marco Casper. He's playing right wing on the second line, not a centerman for the first time in his career, which is very odd because he's very good in that position. Vyacheslav Kulamin is the second line centerman, still with Dylan Jackson as the second line left wing. Brady Kachuk has joined the team, Peyton Krebs, Dylan Larkin, who finally enough Casper never got to play with in Detroit at the age of 39. There he is on defense. Ah, it's okay. And goaltending, there's Gabriel Russell, an 83 overall. So Marco Casper, in this last year of his contract at an 86 overall, has the 85 faceoffs, four-star defense, but is playing on the wing to start the year. Likely getting a lot of penalty kill time, so that's good. But hopefully in a top six role, he'll be able to break out of the 40-point range and get into the 50s, maybe even the 60s. The last time he was on a contract year, he scored 70 points. So let's see what he does this year in 2035-36. In year number 13, the St. Louis Blues returned to the postseason with a 12th place finish in the NHL. 43, 31, and 8 was their record. Marco Casper turned it up a little bit as he scored the most goals he's ever scored with the Blues and tied his St. Louis career high of 55 points, 18 goals, 37 assists through 82 games. He was a negative 10 with 57 penalty minutes, 10 power play points, and was averaging just over 18 and a half minutes per night. In the postseason, the Blues went on a run once again as they beat the Ducks in five, Sharks in seven, but then dropped in five games in the Western Conference Final to the Coyotes, who went on to win the 2036 Cup. In the postseason, Casper scored as many points as he did on the Stanley Cup run of 24 games. So 11 points in 17, that's a better point production rate. I like that from him. Four goals, seven assists, a plus three, all while averaging 19 minutes of ice time per night. So after these six years with the St. Louis Blues, there's been a lot of pain, but two deep playoff runs to show for it. Casper is now an 86 overall at the age of 32, still maintains the four and a half star skating and physical, but all of his other attributes remain between three and a half and four stars. This was the final year of that six year contract he signed in free agency. It got m the number of changes around because of the team not being cap compliant or whatever, but all you need to remember is that he was getting paid 12.27 million per year. He just collected seven. $73.62 million, and now he's headed back to unrestricted free agency. What kind of contract will he sign? Are the Blues happy to keep him? Even though he didn't really do what he was advertised to be able to do, he was a solid performer for St. Louis. So does he re-up with the Blues? Does he move elsewhere? Let's see what the 2036 offseason has in store. In year number 14, Marco Casper is 12th in the NHL. He takes his talents further out west and signs a three-year contract with the Vancouver Canucks, paying him $8.685 million. Still a great contract, but definitely less than he was making with St. Louis. Just over $26 million in total. And he's being paid to be the first line centerman, something that he's really wanted to do. He has Alexei Habibulin on his left, a sniper with five-star shooting, third overall pick in 2035. On his right, he has Zachary Hargrave, fourth overall pick in 2030. He is a playmaker as an 85 overall. Top six, not horrible. There's an 86 overall Matthew Ward over here. Forward core as a whole leaves a little bit to be desired. Defense, there's an 89 overall Kip Kadri, a defensive defenseman, and some other 80 overall, so at least not all 70s. And goaltending, it is 80 overall, 37-year-old Uko Pekalukkanen. So I'm not sure if there's going to be a great team, but I do see it being a better year for Cavs. So he'll be playing first line minutes, playing first unit power play, first unit penalty kill. I, for one, am very excited to see what 2036-37 will have for Casper. Not a huge surprise in year number 14 as the Canucks finished 5th last in the NHL, finishing 27th place. Their record was 34, 42, and 6. Marco Casper once again put up 55 points in 82 games, but had the second highest goal scoring season of his career with 24 goals. Gotta give it to him, and he's been very consistent. The injuries are turned on, and even turned the slider a bit up more than usual. He keeps playing full 82 game seasons. He's durable. 24 goals, 31 assists, 55 point year. Negative 6, 52 penalty minutes, 9 power play points, 4 shorthanded points, and averaging 21 minutes and 14 seconds per night, a career high by far. After this season, he now remains Mains an 86 overall at the age of 33. It doesn't look like his attributes have changed at all. Also, shout out to the Coyotes who have won three consecutive Stanley Cups. Just wanted to put it out there here in 2037. But headed into 2037-38, year number 15. Let's see if Casper and the Canucks can have a bit of a better cast. 
Year number 15, and Marco Casper is still centering the top line here in Vancouver, as he is very happy to do. Happy Bullen and Hargrave have both grown in their overalls. So hopefully that will mean a stronger offensive season from everyone. Defense is still the same here in Vancouver, but they did get a new starting goaltender. 87 overall, Matt Brophy with elite potential. Still as fast and strong as ever on the ice. Let's see how he does with his line mates, having grown over the offseason headed into year number 15. Very slight improvement for the Canucks in year number 15 as they finished 26th in the NHL this time around. Their record was 37, 42, and three. Marco Casper finally cracking 60 points for the first time since that 70 point season with Detroit back in year number seven in 2029-30. 21 goals, 39 assists for 60 points. Once again, playing a full 82 game season. Again, the injury slider is even up more than usual. I'm trying to make it a bit more realistic. Other players are playing less than 82. Casper keeps playing 82. This was his 10th consecutive 82 game season. He's at 820 consecutive games at least. He was a plus three, had 48 penalty minutes and six power play points, all while playing just over 19 and a half minutes of ice time per night. Also one shorthanded point. He's been enjoying his time here in Vancouver now at the age of 34. The individual accolades have been good, but not much to show for it aside from being at the, at the basement of the NHL. He is still an 86 overall with his attributes not really having changed at all in a little while now. But let's see if he can potentially end off his time in Vancouver with a postseason push in 2038-39. And of course, for the Detroit fans who are watching, congratulations as the Red Wings won the 2038 Stanley Cup as they took down the Dallas Stars in a seven-game series. Year number 16 and Marco Casper sits atop the food chain here in Vancouver. Hargrave at an 86 on his left and now Aaron Shipley, an 86 overall grinder on his left. We'll see how that goes. Not sure if it'll help the offensive capabilities, but it's a strong first line, literally. Happy Bulin, Ward, and this guy Reyala on the second line. So the top six is the strongest we've seen it here in Vancouver. The defense is okay. It's actually stronger than it's been. Kip Kadri still hanging around, but the goaltending is now an 84 overall who is signed on for only a one-year contract of course but speaking of contracts this is Marco Casper's final year of the 8.685 three-year deal that he signed that paid him just over 26 million dollars at the age of 34 listed as a second line forward he's still very capable here in the NHL and coming off of 55 and 60 point seasons in Vancouver he will want to continue doing the same it was another bottom-dwelling season for Casper and the Canucks in year number 16 as Vancouver finished third last in the NHL with a record of 33, 44, and 5. Casper was tied for the team lead in points as he scored 58 in 82, his 11th consecutive 82-game season. The man just does not stop. 19 goals, 39 assists from him, negative 8, 62 penalty minutes, and 7 power play points, all while playing almost 22 minutes a night, a new career high in ice time. Now at the age of 35, he's still got it in his older age. 85 overall, going down 1, now listed as a third line scoring forward, so I'll be curious to see what kind of contract he gets in free agency as his 3-year deal with Vancouver is now up. Still has the 4.5 star skating, 4 star physical, 4 star defense, he's very good in that regard. I'm sure he enjoyed his time as first line center with the Canucks. He put up good numbers, had a lot of ice time. So now will he try to find another team that gives him that again, despite maybe not being the best quality team? Or does he really try to chase that cup, even if it means a third line role? We'll see what Casper decides as we move into year number 17. In year number 17, we get our answer. Marco Casper signs a one-year deal with the San Jose Sharks to play as third-line center and push for a cup. Marco Casper, it's a one-year contract for $5.48 million. Look at the team here. You got Logan Coolio as the first-line centerman. On the left, there's Bryson Nickerson, who's a five-star shooting sniper, 98 accuracies. On the right, it's Hanu Rene, a playmaker, 89 overall. Patrick Laine, at the age of 41, is out here on the second line. Still with five-star shooting, the 99 accuracies. Mason McTavish, second-line center. Amir Barnett. Uh, Sergei Nabokov, Evgeny Nabokov's son here here in San Jose, and Casper's playing with Christian Svensson, a two-way forward on his right. Nabokov, by the way, is a playmaker as well. So Casper's playing third-line center here on San Jose. The defense isn't too bad, actually, and goaltending, there's an 87 overall, Cade Barker. I like it here in San Jose. It could be a good fit for Casper, and hopefully he does what they need him to do in his third-line special teams role. Now this is a third-line scoring forward. Puck skills down to three and a half stars.
stars, but the skating's still at four and a half despite the physical dropping to four. He is fast, he is a great two-way player, and he should be a good fit for the Sharks as he pushes for a cup in the twilight of his career. Let's see what happens here in 2039-40. In year number 17, Marco Casper ended his three-year hiatus from the postseason as the Sharks finished 13th in the NHL and made the playoffs with a record of 43, 32, and 7. Casper did very well in his third-line role as he once again played in all 82 games. He's going for the Ironman streak. He scored 17 goals and 39 assists for a 56-point season. Only a negative one, 76 penalty minutes. He's a bit angry down there. 11 power play points, 3 shorthanded points, all while averaging under 17 and a half minutes of ice time per night. In the postseason, the Sharks were very unlucky as they dropped in seven to the Kraken, who lost to the Kings, who lost to the Blues, who lost to the Blue Jackets. So the Sharks ended up being the biggest losers of the 2040 postseason. In those seven games, Marco Casper registered a goal and three assists for four points. He was a negative five and logged over 20 and a half minutes of ice time per night. Gotta give it to him. But after this 17th season, he had some fun in San Jose and with it, he increases to an 80 87 overall, now listed as a second line forward, so headed into unrestricted free agency once again, now as a 36 year old. Will he look for that bottom six role, middle six role? What kind of money is he expecting? He has five star physical defense and senses after that season, so you gotta give it to him. He's worth a good contract, and he just has to find the right team, and hopefully that match will be made in the 2040 offseason. Year number 18 and Marco Casper has moved back east as he signs a two-year deal with the Philadelphia Flyers paying him 7.44 million per season, a total of 14.88. He is playing first line center with Kip Barable on his right, an 86 overall two-way forward, and Per Johansson, an 83 overall two-way forward who's also 35 on his left. Second line looks okay, the offense as a whole not fantastic, a bit up there in age. Shout out to Jack Hughes, who is here as a fourth line left winger at the age of 39 at 84 overall. The lineup will change over the course of the season, but good to see that he's there as well to help out on the offense. Defense is okay-ish in Philadelphia. And Matt Brophy, the starting goalie at an 87. Casper has played with him before. So Marco Casper back to a first line role. He signed a two-year deal with the Flyers, so it's up to Philly management to try and build the team around him. 87 overall, listed as a second line forward. Still has top six potential and five-star defense senses and physical all signs would point to a 50 plus point season maybe even in the 60s with the first line center status but time will tell in 2040-41 in year number 18 marco casper returns to the postseason for the second consecutive year for the first time since the detroit days as the flyers finish 15th place in the nhl with a record of 41 34 and 7. As first line centerman, Marco Casper had a 54 point season, 14 goals and 40 assists. That's kind of what he's good for. And as long as he can keep doing it and teams know what they're getting, there's no problem with that. He once again played a full 82 game season. I don't know what it's going to take to get this guy to sit out for a game. As I said, the injury slider is higher than it normally is, yet he still keeps playing. He was a plus five, had 86 penalty minutes, seven power play points, four shorthanded points, and was averaging 21 and a half minutes per night this guy just gets it done in the postseason marco casper once again returned to the stanley cup final the second time that he has in his career but for the second time in his career drops in six games the flyers beat the senators in round number one in seven the wings in five in round number two that must have been a great matchup then a seven game thriller in the eastern conference final before the minnesota wild beat them for the 2041 cup Marco Casper pulled his weight in the Stanley Cup Three runs, 13 out. assists and 16 points in those 25 games. A plus 3, 13 penalty minutes, and he ended up logging just over 21 minutes per night. After this 18th year and 16th season in the NHL, Marco Casper is 37 years of age and now down to an 85 overall, listed as a third line scoring forward once again. He still has his 5 star senses, 4.5 star defense, everything else between 3 and 4 stars. He signed for one more season, but after that heartbreak in the Stanley Cup final, will he decide to call it a career or come back for one last season with the Flyers? We'll see what the 2041 offseason has in store. Year number 19 and Marco Casper has been demoted to the third line. Hopefully things change over the course of the season, but he is playing third line left wing by well, this guy Della Rovere 
is playing 80 overall second line center. Come on, Philly. He hasn't missed a game since like 2028. So here we are in 2041-42 with Philadelphia at the age of 37, playing on a line with Emmanuel Boro, a playmaking 84 overall centerman, and Franklin Cogliano, a power forward with four and a half star shooting on the right wing of that third line. So Casper with the, you know, you know, for second unit power play plus first unit penalty kill should still be a good amount of ice time for him in this 19th year, 17th in the NHL. Defense is pretty rough in Philly. The goaltending is good. And after a Stanley Cup final heartbreak for the Flyers, they'll want to try and run it back. Casper at an 85 still has top six potential. This is a third line scoring forward. Attributes haven't changed too much over the course of this offseason, but it's shooting down to three stars. 78 and 79 on the accuracies still a great defensive player he's strong he's fast let's see what he can do in what may be his final season year number 19 was unfortunately a step back for the philadelphia flyers as they finished 25th in the nhl with a record of 36 40 and 6 the same amount of wins as the Islanders in 21st place who made the postseason, so they weren't too far off, but those six more regulation losses are what did it. Marco Casper finally missed a game. I don't know if he got hit by a bus or what, but he only played in 74 out of 82 games this season. The lowest amount that he's ever played in a season since his rookie year when he played in 31. He got injured that one year and said never again. 11 goals, 35 assists, and 46 points on pace for a 50 point season around so what he's always been known to do a plus five 41 penalty minutes eight power play points three shorthanded points and just eight seconds shy of logging 16 minutes of ice time per night after this 19th year and 17th in the nhl two years with the flyers he's an 85 overall he's still out here top six potential but remember it's not always the body it's the heart there are a few possibilities but we'll have to wait and see in the 2042 offseason year number 20 and marco casper is not done yet he signs a two-year deal with the chicago blackhawks 5.735 million per year paying him just shy of 11 and a half million dollars but he is on their fourth line you would think that he could be first line center but here he is with chris higgins connor higgins and you got uh, hayden dembski a 22 year old 74 overall on his left Fourth line center, but he does have second unit power play and first unit penalty kill. Not sold on this team, but Marco Casper says there's a little bit more in the tank. He's got something in the basement there, Rocky Balboa. He's an 84 overall, but now has top nine potential. So in this role, if it's not a great season, he could very quickly regress and retire after this year. He's got the four star puck skills with 90 deking, 89 offensive awareness, three and a half star skating. That's going down, but he's still fast. Three and a half star physical, still a lot of high 80s in that category as well. The defense is his best attribute, so hopefully he can maximize that. Here on the Blackhawks for this 20th year and 18th in the NHL. In year number 20, the Chicago Blackhawks were very unlucky, as thanks to a weak central division, they almost had a chance to make it. But the Coyotes and the Avalanche, both with 85 points, beat them out. The Hawks ended up finishing 23rd in the league with 83 points and a record of 38, 37, and 7. Marco Casper was back to playing all 82 games, but only scored 9 goals and 33 assists, his lowest point total since year number 11. 42 points, negative 14, 66 penalty minutes, only 3 power play points, he had 5 shorthanded points, and was playing 16 minutes and 14 seconds per night. Now at the age of 39, coming off of a postseason miss and a Stanley Cup final exit the year before that, Marco Casper is down to a 79 overall. And I wouldn't blame him, nor would I be surprised if he decides to call it a career. Now to 79 overall, he still has the three-star physical, three-and-a-half star defense, three-and-a-half star senses of puck skills, all that good stuff. He could come back and do it in a real fourth-line penalty kill role, as opposed to being placed there when he shouldn't have been there. But I do see that in the top left corner here, he ended up playing offensive line two towards the end of the season. Hopefully he had a lot of time there, but still only a 42 point season. So in the 2043 off season, will Casper say, let's run it back one last time or has he had enough? And in the 2043 off season, Marco Casper decided to call it a career. After 1,415 games, he retires with 886 
points. He goes out as a 79 overall, listed as a depth forward. He probably could have done another one, but as I said, the heart just probably wasn't in it. A lot of postseason heartbreaks, a, a lot of being on a lot of teams that weren't even playoff performers. It's like either went on a deep run or was at the basement of the NHL. Not a lot of close misses, although his last season in Chicago was a close miss. So Marco Casper drafted eighth overall in 2022, ended up coming to North America, playing in the AHL system for two years, then played with the Red Wings for five years. So he spent seven years in the Red Wing organization before he signed that massive contract. I understand why Detroit couldn't match it with the St. Louis Blues. Spent six years in St. Louis, then a three-year stint in Vancouver, then a bunch of one, two-year deals, one year in San Jose, two years in Philly, and one more year in Chicago, leaving a year on the table to decide to call it a career, possibly going back to play in Europe. Marco Casper was an Iron Man. We'll get to his games played later on. But through his career, 281 goals. Never much of a goal scorer. He had the 29 goal season in Detroit and a couple of 20 plus goal seasons in Vancouver. But for the most part, was usually in the teens. He only you know, had a lot of 14, 13, 15 type seasons. He was a great playmaker that complemented his two way ability. 44 assists with the Blues in 2031. Had 41 with the Red Wings, 40 with the Flyers. When it came to the points, he had that one big. 70 point season in a contract year and you know what all the power to him he was a great player but he never hit that point total again and that's what got him that money Vancouver he had a really surprising good stint with Vancouver back-to-back -back 58 60 point seasons there high point totals his plus minus was as high as 37 in that 70 point season of course but besides that oftentimes Usually. in the low pluses or low negatives his plus minus was as bad as negative 25 in St. Louis ends with a career negative 35 Penalty minutes, you know, with the five-star physical, it makes sense he had 956 penalty minutes, only had six in his 31-game uh, rookie season. After that, in a full season, his lowest was 38. He went as high as 91 in the AHL, though, so in the NHL, high as 86. 2,614 shots, as high as 211 in one season, was shooting 10.7%. 44 game-winning goals, 128 power play points. He was a big shorthanded guy. He had 49 shorthanded points. Hats off to him, plus eight shorthanded points in his 70-point season. He was a monster everywhere that season. Time on ice per game ends up averaging out to about 18 and a half minutes per night. He went as high as 21.51 in the uh, latter years of his career, were the longest actually, as he had between 19 and a half and almost 22 in three years of Vancouver and the one with Philadelphia. The total minutes coming out to over 26. He was great on the dot, I'll tell you that. 52.46% on faceoffs in his career, as high as 57.31% with the Flyers, as low as when he's playing in the NHL, 50, and never lower than 50.73. So he was always a winner in the dot in the NHL. That's not easy to come by, so he was elite in that regard. He threw almost 3,000 hits as well, 2,961. He was usually good for a good, you know, 170 plus, it seems like, as high as 204 with St. Louis. Again, in his later years with Philadelphia, still 202. Wow. He had 440 blocks, 897 giveaways, but 1,416 takeaways. I thought he could have won the Selkie Trophy in 2031-32 with the Blues, but only a 51-point season, so other names were probably a bit more popular. But he had 143 takeaways to 44 giveaways. Almost 100 difference right there. In the postseason, Marco Casper, if he made the postseason, he was usually good for like a conference final or a Stanley Cup final, as he had two final appearances with the Flyers and with the Blues. His best being with the Flyers when he had 16 points in 25 games. But in the end, he played 113 postseason games, 22 goals, 41 assists, and 63 points. A plus eight, 60 penalty minutes, shooting 11%, higher, slightly higher than his regular season shooting percentage. 10 power play points and averaging over 19 minutes of ice time per night. On the face-offs, he, he was 55.56% on the dot there. 245 hits, uh, 104 takeaways, 271 giveaways. Bit of a smaller ratio there, 34 block shots through those 113 games. So wrapping it all up here, no franchise records or anything like that, unfortunately. No awards, no cups. 
So that, that's just what we see here in EA land. But Marco Casper still did have a lot of accomplishments. Obviously, it's very difficult to compare records in, whatever, 2043 to the present day 2022. But just to get an idea of where he would rank all time, his 1,415 games would put him 36th all time behind Al McInnes and ahead of Harry Howell. It's also impossible to know how many games he played consecutively as he played 80 games in year number five. So did he miss the last two? Did he miss the first two? to somewhere in between. Then in year number 19, he had a 74 game season. So did he miss the first eighth and then play all 74? It's impossible to know. But we do know that he played a minimum of 1,066 games consecutively and a maximum of 1,220. So the actual number is somewhere in between those two. But just to say, he is the NHL record holder for that stat by far. Moving on to his goals, not really what he was known for, but his 281 goals would put him somewhere in the 240s all time, tied with Bob Pulford and Red Kelly, ahead of Camille Henry and behind Ryan Getzlaff and John Anderson. The assist category is where Casper has a little bit more respect, as he is tied for 91st all time with 605. That ties him with Michel Goulet and puts him ahead of Pavel Datsuk and behind Marion Hossa. And finally, his 886 points all time would put him 126th all time, ahead of Owen Nolan and behind Butch Goring. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the career of Marco Casper. 20 years, 18 of them in the NHL, drafted to Detroit, stayed there for a little while as we recapped earlier. I think the only thing that's maybe a bit unrealistic is that he'll likely, hopefully, spend more time with the Red Wings. But I think it makes sense looking at his 82-game average over the course of his career, over 50 points a season, strong two-way ability, big guy with great skating. I could see this being his type of career. He only had that one 70-point year I could see him having a few offensive explosions but being a consistent 50 maybe even 60 point guy for the uh, majority of his career I would say but he earned a lot of money along the way I'm sure he had some votes for some awards but no award wins no Stanley Cups just a couple of Stanley Cup finals to show for his efforts I'm sure he was a great leader had some you know alternate captaincies maybe even captaincies throughout his career and I enjoyed this one very much because it can't always be that the guy is turns into a franchise player Player and becomes one of the best players of all time. So I'll be curious to come back and watch this later on in Marco Casper's actual career, and perhaps we can even run it back in NHL 23. Speaking of NHL 23, lots of NHL 23 content has been coming out. The reveal trailer just dropped. The franchise mode deep dive will be coming sometime during September. So if you're looking forward to that, you want to see more of these career simulations, franchise mode on NHL 22 and 23, this is the place for you. Be sure to subscribe and check out the channel if you haven't already, because if you're enjoying this, I'm 100% certain that you will enjoy everything else that happens here on the channel. Leave a like as well as your thoughts on the simulation down in the comments or over on the Discord server, link in the description. We would love to have you join us. So thank you very much once again for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed this career from Marco Casper. Wishing him all the best as he joins the NHL in the coming years. And I'm looking forward to seeing you once again in the next one.